after. Come, right, what's next? Let us search for your uncle. We'll need to open the cathedral first. The guards locked it up before they were ambushed. Rumford told me they fought their way back to Adria's hut. The key must still be there. Going to go to your mama's house. We go check out your mama's dirty ass panties, girl. Come on. Let me open. Open it up. That bullet shot is so impressive with the uh, enhanced uh, explosive radius thing on, because it does a decent amount of explosive damage and area of effect, but when they die, the explosion is freaking huge. Like, do you see the difference in size? On lower difficulties, that using that to kill enemies. Um, will kill enemies around it more or less outright. I mean, you do ridiculously good amounts of damage. Um, kind of a background on the difficulty settings for this. Um, the only thing that really changes, you get more stuff, like you get higher experience ratings and everything like that. Uh, more, you know, item find and stuff like that when you use higher difficulties. But the main thing it remixes in terms of actual difficulty... Uh, there we go. Is it just kind of, it it adds more effects to champion enemies and makes it gives enemies more health, but it just kind of makes the the boss fights go a little longer. And as long as you can as long as you can handle the boss fight, um, and you can get away and 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 keep your health up and keep regenerating your health. I mean, there's really nothing difficult to it. It just basically adds time to your fights, which adds I mean, it adds time to the overall playthrough. Uh, which is fine if you're looking for something like that. Oh. Letting me shoot. There we go. But, I mean, it's... it. I don't really feel like it adds much difficulty. It just kind of gives you more things low. to think about when you're fighting. Which, I guess for some people who are just coasting on the, you know, follow the follow button in Call of Duty, I guess it makes it difficult for them, but for... You know, somebody like me who's played Something through Dark Souls and other hard games, um, it it doesn't really make it difficult. Um, you do not need. I have questions in the stream. Do you need a constant connection to the internet for the Xbox One? Uh, you do not need that. Um, I've never not had it, but um, if you have a disked game, it's not going to stop you from playing your game. You know what I mean? Um, it may be different for uh, downloaded titles. Uh, I'll find out once my internet finally dies on me. It's been doing pretty good since I've been home from Antarctica so far. Why, Tony? Or do you run out of internet constantly? Maybe? No? Okay. Let's see. The graphics in this game, though it is top-down, that makes it a little, you know, simpler. I, they're actually surprisingly complex for a top-down game. They look really good. And all the details they put into this, I mean, Blizzard puts a lot of details into their graphics in any game. And once we see some cinematics, I mean, the cinematics even... Even their older game cinematics, like Warcraft 3, which came out over a decade ago, are still just mind-blowing. I mean, they do so many... They do so much good stuff with the cinematics. So I'm actually... I'm not into World of Warcraft anymore. I used to play it back in the day when I was extremely bored and had no one around to stop me from playing it. Um, I would actually still be interested in seeing the movie just to see you know, the bar they set for graphical fidelity compared to, like, a Pixar or, you know, any other CG studio. I mean, that movie's going to come out, and if there's if there's as much... If they put as much love into that as they... Oh, fire at me by enemies while vaulting. What do we got? Spike trap. Uh, I think spike traps are good. Yeah, I like spike traps. I like baiting, baiting apples. What else did I unlock? More stuff there. And I completely forgot what I was talking about. What was I talking about, chat? My brain. 
My brain has stopped worky worky. Help. Help. <laughs> they had those traps um, in the original Diablo 3. It would do damage, it wouldn't kill enemies outright. So the fact that they kind of tied a cool mechanic to the traps or killing enemies with traps kind of gives them purpose again. And the fact that the traps insta kill also, you know, give the traps kind of a purpose again. There we go. Um, destroying stuff in the previous version and the D3 version used to just kind of give you like an experience, give you some experience. And the fact that they chained it to like uh, speed boosts and stuff like that in this version is really awesome. Yeah, explosion. Oh, nobody's walking at it, so it's not exploding. You're gonna die. You're gonna die. I might die as well. Oh my god. Like, just the fact that I can drop a Caltrop to slow... Ooh, legendary panties. To do that. I've got legendary panties sitting in front of me. Anyways, just the fact that you can drop a trap that damages enemies, drop a, a trap that slows enemies, and then quickly vault away like that is a really cool aspect of this damn character. All right, let's let's uh, let's look at the pants. All right, unidentified. Ooh. They remixed a lot of the legendary items. There's, there's a lot of the same legendary items from the previous game, but they remixed how they work and what their bonuses are. So, for instance, these pox folds used to just make you stinky and it wouldn't really do anything, or if it did, it didn't tell you. Um, in this version, it actually tells you what it does, and I think they did remix it. When three or more enemies are within 12 yards, you release a vile stench that deals 308% weapon damage as poison every second for 10 seconds to enemies within 15 yards. That's freaking awesome. That's awesome. And it also bumps up all my other stuff really well, which is good. Uh, let's see. Better burp. Nope. Okay. All right. So I'm not I'm not going for full clears of these levels. I like to I like to full clear as much as possible, um, just because you get a lot more experience and you can find uh, little submissions and challenges and stuff like that that uh, really kind of enhance the game and give you. Oh look, there's my uh, poison fart. I'm stinky. I farted. My fart is killing the undead death enemies. Come on, kill them. No, oh, it wasn't anywhere near any of the other low. stuff. Damn, I hate you slow. Beep, beep, run away. There we go. I should probably work on getting that up. I should work on getting it up. Come on. Come on, girl. Run over the bomb. Run over the bomb. Set it off. Yeah. It stunned him, too. That's awesome. They do have some kind of cliched enemies in this game, and I mean, maybe I'm just saying that because I've played through this game a billion times. Um, but it's really cool what they did with a lot of them, because a lot of them, you know, it, sto it stops being about the fact that it's an undead guy, and it's about the fact that when you kill the undead guy, like 50% of the time you kill him, and then his his the top half of his body disconnects from the bottom half of his body, which is cool. Um, but it kind of it kind of puts a cool, really, like, blizzard spin on the types of enemies you're fighting and where you're fighting them. It also changes a lot uh, in blizzard fiction. Whereas, you know, World of Warcraft started off kind of as... I would say Warcraft in general, but World of Warcraft started off kind of derivative. Oh, jeez, Chris Shrine of, I would say, Tolkien uh, high fantasy, and it kind of became the standard after World of Warcraft blew the entire planet up for, you know, a good seven to eight years. Um, in this, it's still it's still fun. It's kind, of, it's kind of like... I hate to compare it to, like, a fighting game, but it's kind of like Killer Instinct, where the whole point is you're fighting with, like, these, you know, movie references and tropes, and it's like, oh, hey... Like, uh, 
good a good example of that is the new character they have coming out for it named uh, Hisako, uh, who's basically the chick from the ring and the chick from uh, those Japanese movies with the cat kid, uh, the kid that meows like a cat. What are those called? Uh, Sarah Michelle Geller was in the, the American version. I don't know. It was, it was pretty stupid. I didn't really like it. But it's like, here's this super cool movie trope. Now you can play as it in a fighting game. Explosions. Explosions kill everyone. Explosions. I love being able to vault in, drop down my traps, and then vault out and basically use it to cause additional damage and problems for enemy. It doesn't help if they don't run over it, I guess, but whatever. Alright, here are some uh, champion enemies. Not enough hatred. Uh, they're basically super buffed uh, mini boss versions of regular enemies. Uh, and they usually have some type of status effect that is detrimental to you. For instance, a molten enemy type would um, actually defile the ground where it walks and cause molten uh, lava pools to form beneath it, which can damage you if you're standing in. Um, on top of that, they also explode uh, when you kill them. I don't know what that has to do with the word molten, but, you know, that's, uh, that's how it works. <laughs> um, but there's, there's all sorts of different effects like that, and some of them are a lot more detrimental than others. Uh, Molten's one of the worst, because if you get stuck in a corner and there's an enemy about to explode, you're going to eat that explosion if you can't get away from it. Um, and on Hardcore, that's rough, because that can just straight up kill you. I have received a message from Gunfark's servant. I have to check it out. Let's see. Let's take a looky-loo. Let's take a looky-loo. What are you saying? Sorry, we can't open voice messages here. You can't do voice messages between the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One, bro. You can't do it, bro. I'm sorry, bro. Uh, for those of you who don't know who Tony is, this Tony I keep referring to, uh, check out the YouTube Wu-Tang Chicken channel. He's been in a lot of our Let's Plays. He's a good buddy of mine. Um, and he's fun to fuck with. Um, yeah, Brick Squad. Uh, sorry if you're trying to get your voice into the stream, Tony. It's not going to work. They're on to you. They're on to your bullshit. Ha ha. Hey, it is technically two completely oh, different systems. The fact that we can talk back. between two systems at all is pretty impressive. May this wedge hold. Um, if I remember correctly, looking at it, the framework for the Xbox 360, Xbox Live, and the Xbox One, Xbox Live are completely different, which would kind of make sense why they aren't able to really communicate too well between each other. Like, you can send text message, which was nice back when I didn't have an Xbox One, and most of my friends did, and they were trying to talk to me. I was able to at least say, hey... I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm, it's not, there's no value in it for me yet, I don't want to buy it. Cain, I'm here to rescue you. <laughs> Drop Stay these back. damn bombs, son. I need more hatred to do that. Yeah, causing pain. Yeah. There we go. See, so on a, on a lower difficulty, this guy would have been dead by now. Just in terms of less health that he has. Um, it doesn't feel unfair and it isn't annoying. Um, like in uh, other games where you increase the difficulty Thank and they you. just but basically add a ton of health to enemies. That's really goddamn annoying. Um, it's not It's not bad in this one. It just, it just basically adds length to fights and granted I mean if you're fighting a legendary skeleton king do you want the fight to last two minutes or four minutes through old maps I found thanks bro I mean I would rather have the fight last four minutes simply because at that point it's like you know okay I just 
I'm a little overpowered and I'm fighting this this badass enemy, but and and I just steamrolled him. I mean, 